All right, here's a quick video, maybe a mini rant about the dangers of reading headlines. So a new meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials concludes that carbohydrate reduction improves a number of cardiovascular health and body composition markers, but experts urge caution as LDL also increased. So how do we interpret that? Great news, right? Something can improve numerous health markers. Eh, but probably not worth it since LDL goes up and that must be concerning. Otherwise, they wouldn't mention it, right? Not so fast. So this paper looked at 174 randomized controlled trials from 27 different countries. Now, my first red flag is that to be included, studies had to have an arm with less than 45% of the calories from carbohydrates. That's an awful definition of low carb. So normally I would just turn the page and pay no attention because 45% is not low carb. But to their credit, they broke down the analysis to include groups of less than 10% carbs, 10 to 26%, and 26 to 45%. So they do try to kind of tease out the real low carb diets. Another aspect of papers like this, we don't know how they verified what people ate and how often or even if they check ketone levels. So it's another example of how nutrition studies are tricky. It's not as easy as taking a pill. And even then that doesn't happen 100% of the time. So, so grain of salt interpretation, I guess, so to speak. But the findings were interesting, right? So I guess you could say they were modest, but the direction is consistent with what multiple studies demonstrate. Carbohydrate reduction leads to lower blood pressure, lower triglycerides, higher HDL, lower inflammatory markers, and weight loss with improved body composition, such as waist circumference and waist to height ratio. And those last two are really important because some just sort of mistakenly feel eating low carb is inherently pro-inflammatory, but the science says otherwise. And it's an important sort of reflection that not all weight loss is the same, but body composition is probably much more important than just the number on the scale. Oh, and what about the increase in LDL? Well, for the low carb diets, it was a whopping four milligrams per deciliter with no change in ApoB. And for the keto group, it was a meager 13 milligrams per deciliter with a 0.1 increase in ApoB. Now, I don't know about you, but if something provides numerous benefits with just a meager increase in LDL and an even more minuscule increase in ApoB, I wouldn't urge caution. I would say, that sounds like a great net benefit, right? And here's a key analogy. Remember the SGLT2 inhibitor drug class, like Jardiance and Farsiga, used to treat type 2 diabetes, have between 5 and 10 milligram deciliter increase in their LDL. But nowhere do you see headlines urging caution, right? Why? Because blood sugar and insulin levels improve, blood pressure improves, and people lose weight. So you can see the inherent bias. It's a good thing when the drug does it, but maybe not such a good thing when it involves reducing carbohydrates. Does that sound right to you? Okay, so that's my mini rant for today. And uh, you know, always check the data and don't fall for the headlines, especially when it comes to low carb because there is sort of a bias that we're swimming upstream, I guess. So if you are an individual or a clinician considering therapeutic carbohydrate reduction, know that for most people, the benefits appear to outweigh any minimal risk. And the good news is we can always check the relevant health markers and adjust as needed. So don't discount low carb and keto simply for some I guess you could say theoretical concern. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Brett Schur. We'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more, check out these recommended videos. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with our content and help us expand the movement. And if you want to sign up for our newsletter, access our resources, read the latest research, or check out the Think Smart framework, click here to visit our website. See you on the next video.